This is an example of what you will do for your ladies. You'll make a copy in the cover. And then inside this, we've put, we've also copied the leader's guide, the mentor piece that I was telling you about. And so they're gonna meet individually a little longer later to go over specifics for our group, our, our group. And then all they all that's in here is the curriculum. So I would also suggest getting new curriculum, printing off new every time. And so what you're doing is you, you pay for that $100 flash drive, but you can make as many copies as you want of that. So you when you start a group, you can divide that $100 by however many people and then buy their notebooks for them. At the very end, I'm going to go over some things. Like I made a little introduction video if you want to use that at your first meeting and also like what your packet would look like and all that. So we'll do that at the end. But we want to look over, I want you guys to look at the nine tools here. some ladies speak specifically to these nine tools it's kind of nice nine tools nine months you're telling somebody we're going to use nine tools that are biblical based to grow in our relationship with God and we're going to do it for nine months and I will tell you that if it's your first year doing it nine months seems like a really long time because most churches we do six weeks maybe ten week Bible studies and we think, I can't even get them to commit to that. How in the world am I going to get nine months? So I think that it's, inter it's, it's really important that you go into it. It's not the same. It's not a small group. It's not a Bible study. It's a discipleship program. And so going into it that way, and I will tell you, you may just have a few the first year, but the proof is in the pudding. Once women go through and they've really grown, then somebody else wants to do it. And here is a great example. We keep thinking we're going to run out of women. I mean, how many years can you do it and not run out of women? But I, and I don't know why we don't, because God keeps working and it's word of mouth. There's something about them that has changed, so their neighbor comes and does it. And we just keep, we, they just keep coming. People are hungry for the, for, for, the, for the word. So, but once you do it one year, this year was like, ladies were like, oh, how did it go so fast? You know, it, they were just surprised. So, so keep that on my nine tools, nine months. But you'd really have to go at it. It's not like anything we've done before. It's something different. And so, kind of going that mindset. I met with some groups that they're like, "How can I fit this into my our small group cycle?" It's really not even the same. It's just a whole different element. And so, looking at it that way. But your nine tools for growth. This is what we're going to have the ladies go over and talk about how that works. Because I've heard some specific <coughs> questions about this. Um, developing a desire and a habit for the Word of God. So it's not just reading the Bible. It's not just memorizing the Bible. It's not just learning how to journal. It's developing a hunger. The more you eat, the hungrier you get spiritually, right? It's not like you guys are all full now. Or if you're not, go back. <laughs> but you are, so you're not hungry. But in physical, in spiritual, the more you eat, the hungrier yes. you get. And so yes. we're developing a habit. Reflection of Bible reading through journaling. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Developing a private prayer life, praying with others, memorizing scripture. We're going to talk about that. That sometimes the pain and the memorizing scripture are two pieces that are sometimes really hard for ladies. Um, developing a heart to serve others. Meeting with others with women of our worship services. This does not take the place of church for your women. You should be getting them more involved in church. Um, the ladies meet up on Sunday mornings during church and they have a special bond. If somebody is struggling getting there and getting to church, their group rallies around them and says, we miss you. This is a big part of our spiritual growth is hearing the pastor every Sunday morning and being here. So <clears throat> that piece. Then the other piece of that is um, you are now a part of a group. And so the group dynamic is super important. And Debbie is going to cover some of this. Okay, just that... Um, the attendance is a really big deal mm -hmm. because when you're not here, our group is not the same. Mm -hmm. And so that you want committed people. Um, being accountable, you've done, you've done discipleship because you couldn't do it or it's harder to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How many of you have tried and you can't do it? I always tell the story where I would sit in Sunday night, we used to have Sunday night services, and I'm like, okay, starting tomorrow, I'm going to make a daily habit of of spending time with the Lord. Okay, tomorrow, Monday morning, I'm going to do it. I'd go fall off. Three weeks later, I mean, I'm going to do it. And this went on for years. It was just a real hit and miss time with the Lord. And this piece said, okay, we're doing it. And after nine months, there's a habit in the thin. And then there is a curriculum. 
<coughs> so you are you're taking the curriculum like I was telling these liberal ladies the only thing in that whole curriculum and you guys can look here there's another card here the only thing in the curriculum that is subject based <coughs> is forgiveness everything else is just getting deeper in the word even the Holy Spirit peace you do it while you read Acts you're just discussing Acts together and what's in there and it's and the curriculum guides you through that but all of it is about disciplining yourself, spending time with God. Why do you believe what you believe? Where is it in the word? Um, prayer. Um, and then what has God done in your life according to what the scripture says? And then how do I disciple others? So that on, the only subject piece is forgiveness. And so it's very different than any other Bible study. The thing about that is the answer seems to kind of come out. You know, we're like, maybe we should be a little more specific about marriage. But I'm like... The marriage piece is all the way through that. Because when we get to know God and we begin to follow his principles, something shifts in our marriages and our relationships. Maybe it should be parenting. Well, the parenting begins to improve because of the digging in. So it's all there. So I'm going to have um, the ladies, some of the ladies come one-on-one uh, -on -one and talk about specific areas. And what I'd like you to do is keep this handy. So that as they talk, you can kind of check things off. So if they leave something out, we can go back and make sure you understand. Because again, you're leading out in the principles. You're leading out in the tools. If you don't understand it, you don't buy into it, you, you cannot expect the people following you to do it. Either. It has to be something that you understand, and you understand the reason why it's so important. It's just like anything else. If I don't, under, if I don't buy into it, I don't understand the reason why. I'm not going to be able to help you get there, right? I can tell you, you really need to eat nutritionally. It's really important. It's going to make you feel better. But I never do it myself, and I don't really know. I can't have the passion to help you do it as well, okay? All right, so um, I'm going to have um, Debbie. I'm going to have you come first. And we are filming. We've got, uh, we've got a group starting in um, Georgia and Tennessee and New Mexico. And so they wow. couldn't come today. So you have to stand right here so they can see you. <laughs> okay. I will try not okay. to move. And so Debbie's gonna talk a little bit about the group piece of it. So. Um, I'm gonna talk to you about really using your time in small group. And there are challenges because sometimes we're in the large group for quite a while and you may not get a lot of time in your small group. But the first part of this that I'm going to tell you is really being authentic. You need to be real. Sometimes when we feel responsible for something, we feel like we have to have it all together. We have to have it <laughs> and have it going step by step by step in my little rules. Jane has an amazing curriculum put together with um, a time out section that's new this year, and I was looking at that, and that's amazing. That would be a very good guide for new leaders, for new mentors, a checklist. So what I'm gonna tell you first is be authentic. Be who you are. If there are moments that you are struggling and you're going through something yourself, it's very important for your disciples to know that you're human and you're going through this as well. You're not always going to have it together. There have been times I've had disciples in my group that in my head I'm thinking, are you kidding? I have to disciple them. They could disciple me, which does happen. So it's really important that you are real and authentic. Then it's, it kind of goes back to the piece I said earlier that you need to be sure you're in the Word. Our groups are Holy Spirit led. And my very first thing that I would do um, if I, could, if I had time to come early, I would go to the room that my girls would be in and I would pray over the room. I'd pray over the room, I'd pray over the chairs, and I would just sit and I'd read a couple of scripture and ask God just to show up and lead us. Don't let me get in the way because I don't want to be in the way of what God wants to do because I have a plan that I need to follow because I am a planner. So that's, what, that's just something that I did. You need to be flexible. Um, you can have a great plan and thank you, Lord, that the Holy Spirit shows up and something happens through someone else or something that's shared, and you may not get to some of the things, and that's okay, because the Holy Spirit really needs to be the one in charge. We started off with prayer, and in the beginning, I would just lead out in prayer, just to pray over all of us, just to start off. Um, we encourage women to pray out loud. 
and you never know what your group will be like, but you'll know right away as soon as you say, who else would like to pray? Or we'll take turns praying, and the panic looked on their faces, and it's like, I can't do this. So, I am a teacher too, and I used to teach elementary. So, you lead off, you model, you show them, and then the next time, make it simple. Something simple like, share a prayer request. And so you will, will just pray over the person next to you. It can be quick and simple. And eventually, as they put scripture in their heart and they're memorizing it in their mind and heart, they're going to be praying scripture. And they will be. It's amazing. That, that part is just amazing. So, But it's up to you to be encouraging the prayer. We don't want all of these girls by the end of the year thinking, I can't pray out loud. That should just be something they can do simple. Um, on your checklist, the main thing that I would try to do at the very beginning before we got to anything was really go through that. So I would go through in-reaches and outreaches, and I'm not sure if someone's talking about those, but the volunteer work. Just checking, has anybody done this? Um, just remember guys, you need to have one of these each this month. Did we have something as a group we could do? Um, as a large group, small group, whatever it happens to be. So I just kind of go through my checklist. Um, Bible reading plan, same thing, just staying on top, getting a pulse on what the girls are doing, um, making sure that they're staying on track, and I'll kind of talk in a minute how I do that. Memory verses as well, and Sarah's going to be talking about that, but going through, in my particular group, how we would do things, like the first time, I said, let's all say it together, let's all say it together, and then partner up, partner up. Um, we did it different ways. Sometimes um, I'd go up to one of them and just even before it starts and say, you know your memory verse? Can you say it to me? But you can do that once you have a good relationship. A little humor, depends on what it is. But hold them accountable to do it. Um, give them ideas to do the memory verses. And since we have Sarah this year, she will be doing that for our large group to help us with ideas. And there are some creative people out there that really help. Um, Jane started writing on, we had a big write board She'd write it with um, open words, write the scripture, and we'd have to fill in the blanks. Great way to learn, great teaching tool. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Um, what I would do every week, I would send the memory verse in an image through, through group texting. My group, I find out in the beginning, what's the best way for me to communicate with you? And I've had three groups, I think, over the years. And this last group was all like text, group text. And they were good with a group text. Not everybody is. So it's important you don't want to leave somebody out. So I would use a mix of that. I would use group texting every week. Um, and I would schedule it. I would try to schedule to make sure that what point in time. And when I say every week, at least once that week. And sometimes it might have just been once. So once again, don't hold yourself. Oh, I didn't do this, so it's not good enough. But I would just find images of scripture and I would just send it to them just as a reminder. And um, I'll get into some of the other communication ways. But that is one thing that I would do just for the image. And that way it was on their phone as well if they did, didn't carry it with them. Then you will get to the lesson and homework. And of course that's one of the pieces we definitely want to get to um, when we do have time in small groups every week or most weeks. And so just making sure they know up front you're going to hold your book out. This isn't going to be, I'm not going to, you know, get on you for not doing your homework, but I am going to be sure that we're doing it. When everyone's book is open and we're sharing, and we want to encourage sharing from each person, you're going to know who's not done their homework and if there's an issue. And that's when it's important for you as a leader to meet with them, call them later, check with them and say, hey, what's going on? I noticed it wasn't filled out. What was your week like? Let's meet together. And let's look at your schedule during the day. When can we carve out some time if there's a problem? You're going to have women that aren't used to being held accountable. You're going to have women that have never finished anything ever. And so it's really important that you lovingly yet firmly hold them accountable. And your personality, God's put you, that you put them in your group. And so there's a reason for that, that you will be able to connect with them. You know, that's why we have certain women in our group, and every year we think, oh, wow, God, you're amazing. Um, ask questions, get them to share. It's, it's 
We don't want someone to come and sit through sessions week after week and never share <coughs> anything that spoke to them in homework. That's the point of it. You know, we want to understand and share God's word until we're sharing and understanding it. That's, we have to be held accountable for that. So that's good as well. And then at the end, whatever else there was, we, we would pray at the end. And that's usually when we pray for it. If there's any praises, we were really big on praises. You know, we don't want to just be here asking God for something. We need to praise him. And so praising him, reading a scripture at the end, I'm encouraging a woman each week, maybe next week, can you bring a praise scripture? So whatever it happens to be that you, that God will lay on your heart to um, plan that, that hour. I'm going to say hour, it just depends. I think sometimes it's difficult, and that I'm speaking for me as a mentor, that there's so much some weeks that... I'm a person that likes to make sure I had everything done, and it doesn't happen. So you really have to let that go sometimes. And that's when outside of Wednesday night, you need to check up on your mentors. And so the way I would do that, um, I asked my group, and Deb mentioned it earlier, about really getting to know them early on. Schedule a time to meet them early. And I happened to do something as a group early on, and that was nice because I had not done that in the past as early. And that was really good for all of us just to connect outside and get to know each other personally. You don't have time on Wednesday nights to chat about your family and what's going on in your life. There, we're on task. We have a schedule and information to follow. You'll hear some things, I shouldn't say that, but to really get that time to talk you need time outside. <laughs> so that's a, that's a prayer. If you're looking at your schedule thinking, how am I going to do this? God will provide the time. You'll be amazed how it's provided as long as you're, you have a willing heart to listen and put aside some other things. Debbie also made a good comment earlier as being respectful of your family. You know, this is absolutely important. God has called you to this. If you're married, if you have children, you know, you need to make sure you're respectful and submitting to your husband for this as well. So it's important that you are able to do that, and God will show you that. For us, some of the ideas that worked for us were, because of my particular group, um, we would take walks. I, I would do individual walks or say, hey, anyone want to come to town and walk or come out to the country? I happen to live out there. Um, individual coffee dates, quick coke whatever it happens to be, sometimes 30 minutes because it's what worked in their schedule, you know, when you have busy people. Um, one time I, we were trying to get something together to eat out and it wouldn't work, so it worked for me. I had a day free, a Saturday free, so, um, and my husband was farming, so I scheduled a breakfast at Perkins and said whoever can come, some came in. I scheduled a lunch, a late lunch at another place. And so I was in town all day long and literally, and people kind of just came and I never would have thought of that, but it's just what went out. And it was a delightful day. It truly was, especially for me. So um, it was really good. So don't be afraid to be creative. The other part, and this is one of the greatest ways to get to know your girls, and that's to serve in the community. If you can find some, one of your in-reaches, outreaches, whatever it happens to be, to serve with your girls. There is nothing better. And so that's a great way if you can come up as a group with some ideas and you can do that. It's a great way to bond and gets us out of ourselves. And so I just really would encourage you um, to do that as well. Staying on task during Wednesday nights versus winging it. And you know, you're going to have some Wednesdays. In fact, guaranteed you'll have some Wednesdays. I always felt like the enemy, and it, after a year of this, I finally figured it out. Wednesdays were my most difficult day at work, and I would show up here and walk in thinking, I can't do this. I cannot do this, Lord. And Jane mentioned, referenced this earlier, and it was finally when um, it was pointed out to me, thank you, Lord, that I can't do this, because in my weakness, he is strong. And so I want to encourage you, be prepared for that. That's why it's important that you are constantly in the word. You know, when you're weak, that's when God can show up and 
you can let loose, loose of the reins. I'm always talking about my hands because this, this kind of came to me a year or so ago. And, you know, if you're like this all the time, you can't receive what he has. So it's really opening your hands, which is leaving you vulnerable, if you just picture that, and being ready to accept um, what he has for you, even though that might mean stretching you a lot. And I know that's done that for me. Um, and then the weeks that nothing goes according to plan because Holy Spirit shows up, wonderful. You know, one of your girls may have had a breakthrough. Um, soaps, very important. And once you start modeling those, once that you start journaling and you're modeling and you know they lay their soaps out, they're open just for you to see, you, um, hopefully someone will want to share, but we eventually want everyone to share what has God said to them through the word. And the day that God speaks to them for the first time through the word and they share, and then they share and others in the group say, that was for me, amazing and that's how God bonds your community your family so that's why soaps are so important and to encourage that bonding one of the things that happened for my group this year that really oh, I never would have planned this believe me sealed helped seal our seal our group um, there was a, a something that had happened in my life that was a very it was a very difficult day it was a Wednesday of course and I came early, an hour early to pray, because I thought, I've got to be in the Word to be prepared for tonight. And to be honest, by the time that was over, I was ready to go. I thought, I am no shape to lead tonight. I, I mean, it was the enemy. I can't do this, so I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to have my co-mentor do this. And just in that moment, I had a text from someone unrelated to this church, Women of Valor, someone I worked this, that said, I was just thinking about you, and I'm praying for you right now. And she just listed all these things. And of course, I knew that was from God. And so I stayed. And the group, we started. And I, I started off and said, I need to confess something. And here, here I was going to quit and give up and leave. And those girls, we had been together maybe a month. And we, we spent probably 15 minutes in prayer. And during that time, almost every woman confessed a struggle they were going through. So it was a time of vulnerability for all of us. And it, it's like it sealed it. It sealed it for all of us. And after that, they were very open and ready. So that's why I want to encourage you to truly be authentic and real about who you are and even what you're going through. When um, we all have difficult times and perhaps one of your girls likes to talk a lot and, and, and it happens. I mean, we have people that won't talk. Okay, we, were you looking at each other? <laughs> but, it, but it happens. And we have people that they're so burdened and they just want someone to hear them and maybe they don't have that in their life or maybe they tell everybody what's going on. And then we have women that I'm going to sit here and hope she never notices me and I'll just kind of soak it all in. And we don't want either one. So your job is redirecting. And sometimes that's really hard. As a teacher, we learn that. But even then, it's difficult because you're like, oh, I don't want to offend them, and I don't want them to think I'm rude. So um, there's actually there's a couple of pages that I've used. I don't think we have in our book. But you know, to work with people that may monopolize a conversation um, or never speak. And so for you, don't be afraid if you're not sure what to do to go to your leader and ask for ideas. Look it up. I found things online before, and it's okay for you to say, we're going to have to keep going. I will talk to you later. You know, I'm going to get with you later because I want to hear this whole story, but right now we have to get back to what we were doing. Um, blame it on your leader. You can do that as well, but it really is important that we do stay on task, and yet at the same time, they do need to be heard. They need to be heard, so that's okay. Learn some phrases to use, write them down to remind you if that's what you need to do to help redirect your girls back on task. Um, sometimes it'll take a while for you to get to know that. You know, there are times I've been there too thinking, okay, I need to jump in right now, but I don't want to be rude, and how, what, do, what do I need to say? Ask the Lord, what do I need to say? When do I need to do it? And he will show you to do that. 
So that's probably one of the most difficult pieces that people have because you do not want this to turn into an hour, hour and a half of one person sharing their story. Mm -hmm. that's, not, that's not the purpose of this. So it's very important. Um, I loved what Deb said earlier too about um, they call you and yes, you will have years of people doing that for everything or texting and the answer has to be Jesus first. It has to be every single time. And I love what you said, Deb, about what's the scripture? What, what have you done? Have you prayed about this first? You know, everyone can Google scripture even in that moment if that's what they need. But we're there to link arms with them. I love that image. I love that with my group. You know, and I tell my girls, okay, we're linking arms. You know, when someone's struggling and we've been there too, you can't even pray. I can't even think right now. We're right here. We're linking with you and sometimes around you and circling around you to give you that support so that you know. But they have to. I can't be Jesus. I can't be Jesus to these women. So it's very important. The other thing is that they're the ones sharing. You're guiding. You're speaking. You're leading. But it's really important. They're, you're giving them time to share their soaps. And they're all hot moments from the word and the lesson. So that's just a really important part, too. Um, I used to. That was always hard for me. So I started this habit of, and that's what I do to keep my mouth shut. So it's a good, it's a good <laughs> reminder for me. Um, bottom line, if you're in the word, if you're doing all of this as well, um, God's going to give you the peace. The guidance doesn't mean it's going to be easy because he's stretching you too. There's something he wants for you too. But this should not be a stressor. If it's if every Wednesday is coming and you're not not like excited, anxious because what am I going to do, but worried and overwhelmed, if that's what's happening, you need to truly look at your day. What do I need to do differently? Am I spending time in the Word? Am I doing what I need to be doing? Don't be afraid to speak to another mentor or a leader. Um, one of the things that I really encourage my girls, and I'd say, I, I love the word community too, um, and family. I would talk about us, and I'd say, girls, you know, it's not just me, because I think I had seven last year, we had some really large groups. And there's no way, because at the beginning of the year, I thought, how am I going to do this? But God did it. I didn't do it. So encourage them to connect and they did and I have women connect that I never thought would connect so they started connecting with each other sending the word to each other encouraging each other would meet up for coffee with each other that's the goal it can't all be with you so that's one of the things I would really encourage you um, you know Jeremiah 29 13 when you seek me you will find me when you seek me with all your heart and that's probably one of the things I see through this program. We have all of us seeking God and we find him and it's a life-changing experience. So do you want questions now or later? Sure. Questions on anything in group. I mean, some of these girls are gonna be covering that as well, but you know, this is pretty quick. And one of the things, accountability sheets, I would have those two there and I'd remind them every week Go ahead and be filling it out as you go if you've done this and this and this, so that way you know you've done what you need to. Um, so in the curriculum each week, or each month, there's an accountability sheet that's for them to fill out to see what they You know, they attended a service, you didn't, or each, how many services, in-reach, outreach. So, any questions? Okay, thank you. If you find that at the beginning of your group time, like people aren't completing things or they're like, no, I didn't do that this month or whatever, is that something you need to address mm -hmm. individually? Individual, not, yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you kind of talk at the group and you talk about understanding busyness, but um, I would call them individually and I try to meet with them individually. Um, a text usually isn't enough. And sometimes it might be a one-time thing. It's just something that happened. I didn't get to this, something happened. But um, you're going to find there's always women that there'll always be reasons things aren't getting done. So you need to find out what the deeper reason is and ask God to show you that. You know, when you're 
in the word, um, it's praying specifically over each of your mentor, or disciples. That's the other part. You need to be praying over each. Um, God will show you a word. He will show you a word. He will give you a word for them, and you're going to know. You're going to know. So it's very important you meet with them and early, as early as possible. Um, does that help? Anybody else? A couple of things that Debbie said that I, I thought were good. One of the things is um, she talked about leading and not teaching. And I think sometimes when we have a lot to say and God's yeah. really doing a lot, it's easy to be the one that goes in and go, I got some free girls today. Everybody just be quiet. I'm going to talk for an hour and a half. And you really have to be careful about that because your, your job is to pull out of them. You know, they're reading the word, but they've got to figure out how to live the word. And you know, the, the first step in that is talking about it. Like, this is what God told me. you got to give people the chance to do that. And so make sure that you understand you're the facilitator and not it's not a teaching situation, which also frees you up if you don't feel qualified to do it. You're, you're going to have a timed outline. You're going to have the homework. You're going to have the questions. So you're just leading people into getting them to talk and then giving them time to do that. And I love that piece about finding it early. I can think of a couple situations where... You know, I am totally non-confrontational. I don't like to confront people about not doing what they're supposed to do. And so that was hard for me, but I was sorry six months down the line that I didn't say, you know, you, you just aren't coming to church, what's going on? Well, when I finally did that, I found out there were some things that we really need to be praying about. There were some things I could have helped her walk through, but I just didn't want to approach the subject. So I think that's really important as well. She mentioned co-mentors, and somebody had asked about that earlier. Last year, we tried something. What we did was we had women who had gone through the, the, the program once and wanted to go through the program again. And so we decided to do larger groups and a mentor-co-mentor situation, thinking that the co-mentor then would, would sit under a mentor and then they would be ready to be a mentor. And in some cases, that worked really well. Um, hindsight, we're going back to the old time. This year, we're just having mentors and smaller groups because I think that that makes it, it makes it just a little bit, you have a lot of women in that small amount of time to be able to really share and stuff on that. Um, and then she also mentioned small group guidelines. When you, you're going to do the, if you do the curriculum by the book, then the first two weeks you're going to stay as a large group. Then you're going to divide your groups. I would strongly recommend that you do it that way because you don't really know these women and you don't know how committed they are. You will have women that will show up the first time and not do the program. And so have a couple, you have you in the curriculum, it tells you ways you're gonna have the whole group working together for two weeks, and then the third week, you're gonna introduce them to their small group and their mentor. And in the curriculum, also a small group guidelines, which they will go to over together as a group. Everybody understand what's gonna happen during this time and how it's gonna work. And that will also just um, the, re, um, get rid of problems before they happen as far as dominating conversations. All right, any other questions you guys have about group time? Just real yeah. quick, just a, will you split them up after you've got together? Maybe once you'll wait to see who's going to fall off. I just yeah. wanted to clarify that. Yeah, I do that that very week. Okay. I put them in groups because, you know, like I said, people come in for different reasons, and you just want to make sure that they're really going to stick to it. You don't want to put three in a group and then have one of those three not show up. And so that's a really good question. I wait until we've met a couple of times. Okay, so maybe going into that third week is when you're gonna mm -hmm. yeah. split them up among the yeah. Okay, good. Other questions about that? Okay. All right. Um, Julie, I'm gonna have you come next um, and talk a little bit about how we implement prayer, both individually and in small groups, and as large groups. <laughs> and intermediate. Yeah. Well, I could talk all day on prayer, but I'm not going to. <laughs> not today, anyhow. Um, somebody was, I don't know if it was Jane or one of the other ladies, they were talking about being hungry in the spirit. And I want to tell you that I'm greedy for prayer. Greedy. I want to find those times when I can slip away to pray 
I want to find those big chunks of time, I want to find those little chunks of time, but I'm greedy for it. I've always prayed, but it's just been in the past three years that it has just become overwhelming for me. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this book, The Anna Anointing, but it's about Anna. She was that prophetess who at a very young age was left a widow, and she stayed in the temple and she prayed and fasted. That's where she lived. She was a prayer, and she got to see Simeon hold the baby Jesus. But um, she, this is, what, this is the woman that I want to meet when I go to heaven. This is the one person I want to meet because I'm so enthralled by her and her, she was greedy for prayer. She stayed there day and night. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness will co cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear upon you, and nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your light. I'm reading a book uh, titled Intercessory Prayer, and in that book, it says that we are the light that God has sent and that he has set his glory upon us, his people. You and me, we get to break the bondages and the darkness of people through intercessory prayer and corporate prayer. And we often forget how powerful the Holy Spirit really is in us and how destructive we can be to darkness. Do you know how destructive you can be to darkness? And if we use that power uh, through intercessory and individual prayer around us, even the nations are gonna be drawn to God. So I'm saying to us, let's arise and shine. Amen. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon us, but you know what, that's gonna come through prayer. Individual prayer, corporate prayer. And I, you know, I don't wanna sound negative, but <clears throat> you as leaders, as mentors, without sincere, dedicated, persistent, individual and corporate prayer, your Women of Valor ministry is going to flop. It's going to wilt. Oh yes, you can stir it up. <laughs> you can stir up your program and you can stir up your little sheets of what you need to do and you can follow your book. But if there isn't prayer undergirding it, if there isn't prayer for the foundation, then your Women of Valor ministry is not going to be the dynamic, life-changing, God-honoring, disciple-making ministry that he's, de that he's designed to make it. This is God's plan. This is what God wants to do. But he, has, but he needs us to work with him. And so I'm just saying to you right now, get ready to pray. <laughs> get ready. I'd like you to look at your hands. Just, I don't know, can we just look at your hands? <laughs> I guess we don't, right? Okay, but if you look at your hands, uh, our hands are all different shapes, sizes, textures, some have calluses, some are very nicely manicured, mine aren't. <laughs> we have different hands, but one calling. Scripture tells us to put our hands to the plow. And not to look back. And so it doesn't matter what our hands look like, their shape, if they're young or old hands. He says, put your hands to the plow. And he's talking there about the plow of making disciples. He's talking about the plow of prayer. 
Put your hands to the plow and don't look over your shoulder. Don't look back. If you know anything about, I'm sure there's farmers here, or people who know about farming, and if you know about farming, you know that it's a, or plowing, it's a dirty, sweaty, time-consuming thing. Especially back in the day when they didn't have modern tractors with the cabs, and the air conditioning, and the DVDs, and the TVs, and I don't know, what else? Snacks being served to you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up on a farm back in the olden days where my dad would drive a tractor with, uh, he was out in the open. And he would plow up and down the fields. And he would work in the heat of the day, in the wind, in the, sometimes in the rain, okay? Um, and he did that because he wanted a good crop. He gave up his time. He gave up sleep. Sometimes my dad gave up uh, meals. He would plow into the night because he knew that crop had to get in. And he knew if he slacked, there wasn't going to be a crop. And then what? Then his family wasn't going to be taken care of. And so he knew that he needed to put his hand to the plow, or his tractor to the plow, I guess, when he was out there. And it's the same with us that we need to put our hands to the prayer plow. <laughs> if we want our ministry to grow, if we want our ministry to be the dynamic, disciple-making uh, ministry that God has ordained it to do, then we need to take this very seriously and put our hands to the prayer plow. I get pretty riled up about prayer. Julie, <laughs> <laughs> where's that scripture from? Which one? The put your hands to the plow. Uh, it's in Luke 9, uh, the very end of that chapter. I can't remember. Maybe somebody could look it up. I have it somewhere. I just don't have it with me. But it's in Luke 9, and he, um, you know, People are saying, we're going, we want to follow you, we want to follow you, we want to be part of you. And then Jesus said, okay, then you're going to have to put your hand to the plow and not look back. And then they weren't so crazy about it. <laughs> oh, my goodness, plow. Because you know what? Back then, the people knew what plowing uh, really meant. <clears throat> I was going to draw a picture of what an old plow looked like, but I didn't. But um, back in the day, back in like Jesus' day, a plow was like this big stick, and it had a blade at the end of it, and that's how they plowed. That's how they plowed, up and down the fields, up and down the fields. And so Jesus knew, ex I'm getting off my topic, so I'm going to have to get back <laughs> to it. <laughs> but Jesus knew, what, Jesus knew what he was talking about when he was talking about a plow. And so when he said, you have to put your hand to the plow and not turn back and not look back, he knew exactly that these people were going to get it. These people were going to know what it meant to plow. And that they were going to get the seriousness of it. And that if I'm plowing but I'm looking back, what's going to happen? <laughs> I'm going to get distracted and I'm going to get off. Uh, my furrows are going to be all crazy and messed up and I'm not going to be able to use the land the way it was meant to be. Okay? All right, <clears throat> I'm gonna get off that now. Um, 62, by the way, it is the very last version. But plow, if you really want to plow, if you really want this, if you really want your Women of Valor, uh, Valor ministry to grow, then you're gonna have to determine in your heart, right now, I'm gonna put my hand to the plow. I'm gonna put my hand to the plow in prayer. And it's not always easy because there are different women here and you have different seasons of time. Some of you uh, are maybe single mothers, or you have children, or you have a job, and you're not always gonna have the same amount of time that somebody older, or maybe who isn't working so many hours has, okay? I, um, I was a single, I still am a single mom. <laughs> a single mom, but my kids are in their 40s now. But, uh, uh, so I know what it's like to be a single mom and to work 
and to, and to want to sit and spend time with the Lord, but there was always something else, okay? So that might be the season you're in right now. Maybe you're in the season where you're not working, or you're working fewer hours, and you're older and you don't have those little darling children running around your legs. And you can spend <coughs> two and three hours at a whack before the Lord. That's the season I'm in right now. And oh, I love it. I'm, I love it. But we're all in different seasons, but we can all still put our hand to that same plow. It's just going to look a little bit differently about how we do that. And so I, I just really encourage you to be really persistent in that. Okay, let's go on with um, what I was really going to talk about. <laughs> I don't know, do you have in your books, um, it talks about the corporate prayer meeting and how important that is. Yeah, that's in the leader's guide. That's in the leader's guide. Okay, and I just want to spend some time uh, uh, with you with this. Um, um, first of all, I want to say that it's, good, it's really important that you pray individually but corporately. Uh, I believe it's Proverbs that says, you know, if you fall in a ditch, you want somebody there to help you out. <laughs> And it's the same thing in our lives. When we fall into a ditch, no matter what that ditch is or what's going on, we want somebody there beside us to help get us out of there. And so that's the beauty of corporate prayer. Um, it's standing uh, shoulder to shoulder, standing uh, in the gap with each other. Uh, because you, because um, uh, when we have our hand to the plow, it can get to be tedious, disappointing, strenuous work, especially when we're working with people. especially when we're working with people. And we might get really tired, and, and just like Debbie was saying, she wanted to quit. But we need somebody, we need people to come alongside of us and say, come on, you can do this, I'm, I'm with you, I'm with you. I'm gonna walk beside you, and that's what I like about corporate prayer. I wasn't so crazy about corporate prayer when we started it, because I wasn't used to praying out loud. <laughs> and I wasn't used to sharing things. <clears throat> but I got hooked on it, and now it's an addiction. And I want to do it. <laughs> well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, <laughs> after my sugar. Um, here um, at, at our church, we have Sunday morning prayer for women at eight, at eight o'clock. It is corporate prayer. We have prayer, um, individual and corporate prayer, on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. Oh, what a joyful time that is. If you're not coming or if you want to start doing that at your place, oh, oh. There's something about the morning. There's something about getting up in the morning and, and, and meeting with the Lord the first thing, you know. I don't know if you're morning people, I am, but it's when I'm the freshest and my brain is functioning like it should. And there's just something beautiful about the early morning. I've seen some such beautiful things. Um, so that's Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6. Thursdays at noon, uh, Deb Allen is going to start a, a corporate and individual prayer again. She did that last year at noon for those people who couldn't get up at 6, who didn't want to, or maybe, uh, I don't know, 110 different reasons. We're going to start that again. Um, there is a, a, a couple who do, a, I believe it's a third Saturday night. Is that right, Jane? That second Saturday night where there's prayer here. Um, can be individual and corporate prayer. Um, so, oh, we've had all night prayer meetings. Oh, oh, that's a that's another topic in itself. Those all night prayer meetings. We start at nine o'clock at night, and our goal is five o'clock. Okay, obviously not everybody stays, or you know people are falling asleep or whatever. Those are wonderful times. Corporate prayer and individual prayer. We have communion at that time. Women share. We worship. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I hope we can have more this year. And then we have uh, our church meets with other community churches. We've been having community prayer where churches meet at uh, different, uh, different locations and we pray together. And then uh, coming up on September 2nd, we're having a, what's called Super Sunday here in Great Bend where I think it's 17 churches. We're getting together at the football field and we're going to have a community service. And we get to be, um, we get to be on the prayer team. We get to be those people who come uh, after the end of the service if they want prayer for salvation or anything else. We get to do that. Amen. We get to be the light. 
and uh, we get to help bring darkness, uh, bring light into darkness. So what a wonderful thing. So these are just some opportunities that you might think about for individual and corporate prayer. Okay, how much time do I have left, Shane? Okay, okay. give me a nod or something. Okay, so, but what I want to go over, um, <laughs> she nodding her <laughs> Um, in your book, you're going to, there's going to be this page that's going to talk about corporate prayer. And I want to go over uh, an acronym. It's called ACTSO. A-C-T-S-O, the prayer model. Can we write up that prayer model? Oh, that'd be good. Thank you. And this is a really nice, um, this is a really nice form mm -hmm. to follow for your prayer meetings because sometimes we don't know how to do this. And this is in the curriculum. Yeah, and this is in the curriculum. The first one, the A, is acknowledging who God is. So the leader would start with scripture on worship. Um, and here they talk about Isaiah 25, verse one. And then we, uh, praying a prayer of worship. Um, the ladies in their small groups or corporately can praise God for who he is. And that's not hard, is it? If you look outside right now, what do you see? You see trees, you see the green grass, you see the sky. Uh, we don't see the sun right here right now. But we look at that and we think the creator who created all that, he wants to have time with us. Doesn't that just boggle your mind? That the great I am, he could have anything he wanted, but he wants time with you and me. He says, come apart. Would you just come and sit with me for a while? The, the Lord spoke to me this past week. Come and sit with me for a while. Just come, just put that all away. Come and sit with me for a while. And then he showed me such a splendorous uh, 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 thunderstorm. <laughs> Anyhow, so you'll start out with acknowledging who God is, and that's not difficult. That's the A, okay? The C, then, is the confession of sin. And that's not hard, because we all have sin. And so the leader would read a scripture on confessing sin. It might be 1 John 1, 19. Um, searching our hearts, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. And then each, each group then prayers a prayer, a prayer of confession. Now, you, um, and when you have corporate prayer, you're going to have women who have not prayed out loud before. And so just ease them into it. If they can't do it right away, it's okay. The lady, the 85-year-old lady who was in my group, she had never prayed corporately before, and she was terrified. Well, how do I pray? What do I say? Um, you know, all that scary stuff. So don't push them in right away. Let them ease into it, okay? Uh, then the T is for Thanksgiving. The leader would, re would uh, read a scripture on Thanksgiving. And there's plenty of those psalms. Um, Psalm, Psalm 92, verse 2. Each group prays and thanks God for the things the Holy Spirit brings to their mind. And that one can go on and on because there are so many things um, as we're praying corporately. Uh, and then the SO is praying for ourselves and others. And the leader would read a scripture on bringing our needs before God. And that could be Philippians 4, 6. And then each group could pray for themselves and others. And um, Deb already mentioned about uh, a nice way to, to get into that. Do you have anything you need prayer for today? How can we pray for you? And what I like, Deb Allen's, is I love this, Deb. I never told you this, but I love it because she goes around. We're all standing together holding hands, and she goes around and asks everybody individually, what can we pray for you for? It's not if you have a prayer request. It's, you know, I'm going to ask you. So I really, I, I really appreciate that. She gets right down to the core. She gets right off. She just gets to it when we pray. We don't, because we don't have to be shy. We don't have to be shy around each other. We don't have to be shy around God. He knows it anyhow. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and so we pray. Okay. Worshiping God, um, what we do here, um, like for the six o'clock morning prayer, we come in, um, we, we put on some soft music, put on some, we dim the lights, and we just get to sit before the Lord. 
just get to sit there quietly. And that's such a beautiful, precious time individually. And then probably after about a half an hour, then we join together corporately in prayer. And isn't that right, Jane, how God has moved? One person would pray, and then another person would say, oh man, God's been speaking to me exactly about that. And it's so awesome. We say when the Holy Spirit shows up, well, the Holy Spirit's always showing up. I mean, he's always here. But sometimes it just seems like the Holy Spirit, the presence is just deep, deeper than it's ever been. And those are such wonderful, wonderful, precious times. Um, and then if anybody feels like maybe they have a word from the Lord, they will share that. Um, and just um, encouraging people to stay in God's presence, because I don't know about you, well, I'm sure you all have busy times. It's busy out there. and But we need a time to just linger in the presence of the Lord so he can just speak to us, to just soak that up so that we can get ready to go out to face, to face the day or face whatever is going on. But he's so good to us that he wants to speak to us. He wants to speak to you. He wants to speak to me. His deep, the deep of the Lord is speaking to our deep the spirit inside of us. His spirit speaks to us and woos us to come to him. Sometimes I don't really feel like praying. It's like, it's like I have two personalities. <laughs> There's Julie who would rather not and just kind of sit here and just nod off. But my spirit, the spirit in me, hears the spirit of God calling my spirit and I can't but help but to go to the Lord. That's what he'll do for us, but we have to get quiet first. And so I really encourage you as, um, as leaders, as mentors, to put your hand to that prayer plow. Grasp it, hold on to it tight, and not to look back. Sometimes we think, oh, I remember what God did back in the olden days. That was so awesome. And we get our eyes off what he's doing today, and then we get distracted. So I just encourage you, and um, um, your groups will you you it, it, your group will be phenomenal if you base it on prayer. There will be things that you never expected that God could even possibly do. I've I've been praying for something now for 20 years, and it still hasn't come to pass. However, I had been praying for something for 22 years, and it just recently came to pass. Mm -hmm. Praise God. 22. But I had to put my hand to the plow. And even when things looked dark, and the enemy would come and say, that's never going to happen, to keep putting my hand to the plow and say, oh no, I, I, I believe the Lord has got a purpose and a plan for this. And he showed up. <laughs> and I'm believing that the 20-year-old prayer is going to come to pass too, and that I'm going to see it in the land of the living. Amen. 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 Um, I, I love that because... Um, that has been a really key. I think prayer is the hardest thing for us individually, and I think prayer corporately is the hardest thing. But we have seen God do crazy things because we were willing to do the hard thing. I just, that is, that is a huge key. And don't leave that piece out. It's almost like now you've, in, you've given people permission to come to corporate prayer. I'm looking at Tammy thinking, you know, the whole corporate prayer thing was when you start Women of Valor, maybe it was the new. I'd really done that, no. like that, and just what a life changing it was for your spiritual walk. I was the person who came to TLC and asked Carol afterwards, so is this, was this a prayer meeting? I had no clue. Right, so yeah, and just that coming and praying. So it's like that piece says, okay, we give you an invitation. Come hear from God. And we have, sometimes we have to, I remember the first time somebody said to me, I'm gonna teach you how to pray. Okay, I really do want to know, but I don't know. And she said, "Okay, you show up every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. We're going to pray." Yeah. And I did. I felt obligated. Like I thought, "If I got to do what she says, I told her I would." And, and so it was obligation for a month or two, and then it started to come. But I had I had to be accountable, and so that's what we're going to do in this. So on your tools, we've covered some of the group things, importance of group. You've covered prayer, and so I'm just gonna we're gonna have we're sorry we're gonna have you come in just a minute. But I think that um, I want you, for a couple of minutes, I want you to talk about two things with people. And you can get up a move if you'd like. Maybe we should do that. Everybody stand up. We'll do that. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> 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 
think in your mind, um, what is the most difficult thing about personal prayer and corporate prayer? What do you think is the hardest thing, maybe for you or for the women around you? What's the hardest thing, personal prayer and corporate prayer? Okay, have we got at least one answer? Okay, now I want you to find somebody you don't know, and I want you to go talk to them about that. Yes. 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 Yes.